Hello all, so I made a video on how you go about vacuuming out a Benny split and set the line set inside of a vacuum with an analog gauge set. And I got a lot of questions on that video. So I thought I'd do an updated video and plus show you how you go about testing for leaks and what you could do if there is a leak. Because that's the most common issue with these mini split installs is that there's a refrigerant leak, a really slow leak, and it works good. And then like a week later, it's not working no more and it lost its refrigerant. And the reason for that is that these seals right here is that they leak or there's some kind of issue with the flare and so it's leaking and it's causing a problem but i'm going to go over everything and show you how you go about handling this and so the main thing we're trying to do when we do this is we want to vacuum out these lines we want to remove any small particles inside of there like water vapor or anything like that if there's any kind of water vapor inside of there then it could cause damage to the unit and that can cause problems and so we want to remove all these small particles and all these little things like that inside of the line set and the best way to do that is to use a vacuum pump and to vacuum it down. Now, a lot of people nowadays, they use micron gauges and they are good. They do work good, but they're not needed. You don't need to use micron gauges. Old analog gauges have been used for many years. They're still widely used. Many people still use these. If you do have a micron gauge, then use it. It's good. There's nothing wrong with those. But basically in this video, I'm going to be using these analog HVAC gauges. And we're going to set this whole unit inside of a vacuum with this vacuum pump. And then after we set a vacuum on the line set, we're going to release the refrigerant into the system. And then we're going to check to see if there's any leaks using just standard dish soap. You could just use dish soap and we're just going to go around to all these connections. And we're just going to check to see if we see anything bubbling. And if we see any bubbles, then we know we got a leak. And if you do have a leak, there's a few ways you can handle it. You, you can try to tighten it up a little bit in some cases. Or, or if you know it's already tightened up real good, it might have a bad flare. And if there is a leak, then you could pump all the refrigerant back into this outside condensing unit the way it is right now. Right now, all that refrigerant is stored inside of this outside unit. Well, you can place it back inside of the outside unit, and that way you can work on the line set if it is leaking. There's some steps to go about doing that, and hopefully you won't have to. Hopefully you do this and there's no leaks or nothing like that. But if there is a leak, there's some different ways to go about handling it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook up my gauges. And with these analog gauges, the only gauge we're going to be using is going to be this blue side. This is the high pressure side. This is the low pressure side. These are both off. If you turn these clockwise, they'll be off. So these are both off right now. We're not even going to be using this side. We're only going to be using this blue side or the low pressure side. And the way these work is really simple is that when you open this, it's going to open going into the center. So if you open the low pressure side, then this is going to open up to the center yellow hose. That's the same over here. If you open this up, then this would open up to the center yellow hose, but this is off. So we're gonna use the center yellow hose and we're gonna hook it up to our vacuum pump and we're gonna hook our blue hose to the mini split. And so I'm gonna go and hook those up. I'm gonna take these off. These ports back here, they just keep debris out of your connections. These don't go to nothing back here. And all of these mini splits, they need this special little connector little adapter that hooks to it. I'll put a link down below if you need to check out what I'm talking about right here, but these have a, like a little adapter and you need this when you go to do this, otherwise you won't be able to do it. So basically you need this little adapter and I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my blue hose over to the mini split. I'm gonna have to use two hands to make sure I get that tighter. And my yellow hose is gonna go over here to the vacuum pump. Now we want to make sure all these connections are good and tight. And so basically what's going on right here is I got the blue hose coming in. It's going to come up around. It's going to go up to this manifold gauge on this side. Right now it's off, but when I open it, it's going to open up this middle port and it's going to open up this, to this yellow line, which is hooked up to the vacuum pump. And that's basically it. So we're going to want to turn on the vacuum pump and then we're going to watch our gauges. And what's going on with this gauge is right now you can see it, it's at zero. But when we turn on the vacuum pump, it's going to start pumping it down into negative pressure. So it'll start moving down closer to this negative 30. And we're going to want to set a good deep vacuum on the whole unit, on the line set and everything. And so I'm going to go and turn on the vacuum pump and I'm going to let it run. I'm going to let it run for like at least half an hour or so and make sure it sets a good deep vacuum and works really good. And so I'm going to go and turn on this vacuum pump. And now we're going to go ahead and open up our valve over here. And when we do, this should start to suck it down at a negative, negative pressure. And so I'm going to go ahead and let this run. I'm going to let it run for like at least half an hour. Make sure it really pumps down a good vacuum. And when it's done, I'll be back.
Okay, so it's been vacuuming out for like at least half an hour. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna shut this valve off so that all we're doing is just reading the pressure on the unit, on the line set. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off, shut this valve off, and I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the vacuum pump. Okay, so now all we're doing is we're just reading the pressure that's in that line set. And what you want to do is you want to see if this loses any pressure. See how right now it's down inside the negative territory? It's right down around that negative 30. If it starts to move back up towards the zero, where it was at when we started, then you know you got a leak and you know there's some kind of problem, you know you got to fix it. You can't leave it like this for a while. You can even leave it like this for like overnight or something like that and come back and see if that's moved up at all just to see if it's losing pressure. Sometimes a leak on these is really super slow and it'll leak out very slowly, like over a week or two weeks or a month or something like that. So sometimes it can be kind of hard to spot. So the next thing that you can do is that we're going to go ahead and release the refrigerant so that the refrigerant is inside of the line set. And then we're going to go around and check all our connections with soap and be sure that it's sealed up good. Because if it's not, you'll get bubbles out of these. And hopefully you don't have no bubbles and you don't have no issues. If there is bubbles, then you can do what they call pumping down the unit, where you could suck all the refrigerant back into the outside condenser the way it is when it's shipped. That way you could remove those lines and check them, check out those flares, reflare them, or whatever you need to do to fix it so that it's not leaking. And then you could vacuum it all down again, release the refrigerant, and check it again. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wait like at least 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to be sure that this doesn't move back up closer to the zero. If it doesn't, then I'm going to go ahead and release the refrigerant. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this thing's been sitting for like at least 25 minutes or so, half an hour maybe. And it's not losing any pressure. I've been watching it and it's not going back up to that zero. It's staying at that same spot where it has been. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the refrigerant into the system. And there's a certain step that you need to do to do this. And basically you don't remove this until refrigerant is inside of the system. If you take this off right now, then air will go rushing in and then you'll lose your vacuum. So what you do is you release the refrigerant and then you take this off as quick as you can. A little bit will come out, but you do it really super quick and it's very minimal and you just get it off as fast as you can. So that's basically it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these caps off. I've already loosened them up with my crescent wrench, these caps right here. And inside of here is gonna be an Allen key that you use to turn them open, and this will release the refrigerant into the lines. So let me go ahead and do that right now. And you want to release both of these all the way out. There'll be a stop when they stop turning all the way. You'll be able to fill it when they stop. But you want to turn them all the way out. There it is right there. You don't want to push real hard or nothing. You can just fill it when it stops. So you want these all the way open. Okay, so now refrigerant is inside of that line set. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back on, these caps. It's a good idea to tighten these up a little bit since sometimes it can leak real slowly. So I just tighten them up just a little bit. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove this right here. And we want to do it as fast as, as we can. A little bit of refrigerant is going to come out, but this is the way you do it. Otherwise, air is going to get sucked back into that vacuum and you're going to lose your vacuum. And so I'm just going to turn this really super quick and take it off as fast as I can. And, and that's basically it. You just take it off as quick as you can. Put this cap back on. And so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to go around and check all these connections with soap and check to see if any of them are bubbling out, that if any of them are leaking, if we see any bubbles. So we're gonna take some soap and we're just gonna go around each one of these connections. And I just wanna see if I see any bubbles. Because if I see any bubbles, then I know I got a leak. All right, I don't see nothing going on here. I don't see no bubbles. These all look good. So I'm gonna go up here and check these up here next. Okay, I just checked those and I don't see no bubbles up there either. There's no leaks going on. So this is all good. This unit's all good.
if you were to see some bubbles on these, then what you do is you do what's called a pump down. Basically how that works is that you tighten down the high pressure side and then you put the unit on the inside in cool mode and that'll start pumping it into this outside unit and you watch your gauges and as soon as it drops down, then you tighten up your low pressure side and that's pretty much it. And then when all the refrigerant is locked into the outside condensing unit, then you can remove these lines without losing no refrigerant and you could fix them or do whatever you have to do to stop them from leaking. I'll put links down below for the step-by-step -step on how you go about pumping down a system if you do have a leak. Hopefully you don't have no leaks. Hopefully it's all good. And at that point, you're good to go. Your unit should be working and ready to go. And so that's basically it. That's how you go about setting a unit into a vacuum, how you release the refrigerant into the lines, and how you make sure that you don't have no leaks and what to do if you do have a leak. If you have any questions, ask me down below and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.